studio situation somewhat, such that, you know, my mic isn't absolute crap. Um, it was all just my computer. Um, whenever I plugged in my headphones, it would just, uh, well, if I didn't have my headphones in, I would get, like, a feedback loop. And so it was just, like, this really high-pitched thing, and nobody was telling me about it. Nobody said anything in the audience about it. Nobody said anything in the chat. Nobody told me anything, but that was still happening, and it was happening, and I was like, oh my gosh, and I, I figured it out, and I was like, golly. I'm amazed that anybody was able to stick around for that stream. <laughs> but yeah. So, right now, you know, we're looking at section, not section, it's, it's like a Senate. 263 called the Journalism Competition and Preservation <laughs> Act of 2021. Funny. Funny, 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 funny. Uh, sponsored by Amy Klobuchar. Right? You know, somebody who's definitely been a uh, staunch proponent of uh, competition in the marketplace. Mm hmm. Okay. Anyway. The important sections of this are the definitions of a news content creator and an content content distributor. Actually, you know, the definitions of the antitrust laws is actually pretty important too. Because, you know, uh, this is, you know, the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act of 2021. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so antitrust laws in this area, they include uh, sections of the federal section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act to the extent that section applies to unfair methods of competition huh that's interesting see the, the whole thing about this is no news content creator may be held liable under the antitrust laws and uh, what they mean is no uh, news content creator can be uh, prosecuted for Unfair methods of competition. Alright. And then the next little definition. Any state law that prohibits or penalizes the conduct described within. Alright, so what the what are they doing here? Well, it's got something to do with news content creators and online content distributor. Now what's curious about this is online content distributor is a very, very specific definition. Very specific. Right, has not has no fewer than they they say has not fewer. That's just confusing. It's just a way to bend the brain. So it's a it gets tougher to just kind of take it all in. So it has no fewer, has no less than one billion monthly active users. That's what they're just that's what they're saying. A content online content distributor is in this now. Who the hell is an online content distributor? Now, this is, you know, in aggregate across all of its websites and online services worldwide, right? So, that could include Google. However, Google's not included when I go and I look it up, right? I just looked up, you know, active users. And, you know, in the 1 billion range from the chart I got, Facebook YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and WeChat. Right? So Facebook's a big one. YouTube's a big one. WeChat's a big one. But, you know, Facebook effectively owns, you know, Facebook Messenger and Instagram, so it's all kind of the same thing. All right? Now, what does it say a news content creator is? Because that's pretty specific, because it only means the big, giant online content distributors. News content creator, All right? Okay, any print, broadcast, or digital news organization that has a dedicated professional editorial staff that creates and distributes original news and related content concerning local, national, or international matters of public interest, at least in place. So, I mean, quite literally, that could be me. That could be me. I am the editorial staff of this. I create and I distribute. Original news. Now, you know, I'm doing original news based on laws here, right? I'm not like in the field with a camera, 
you know, videotaping the tornado that's tearing the city apart and putting that up, right? But that's, you know, that would also be a news content creator. Even if they go back and they edit, edit it up and then they put it out and they distribute it, right? But now the important part here is on at least a weekly basis. Now that's, that, that could be me. Right now, that's not going to be like a monthly like magazine or a monthly newspaper, but you know, like somebody who literally creates little news content videos, right? Just uploads them to the internet. That can be this guy, right? He's the dedicated professional editorial staff that does this, right? He does it on content concerning local, national, or international matters of public interest, and on a weekly basis. So so far, that literally could be me is marketed through subscriptions, advertising, or sponsorship, right? Now, you know, I don't actually do any advertising, right? But if I did, it would just be like, you know, print out some papers, go and staple them on some telephone poles around the neighborhood, and all of a sudden, I'm advertising, right? So I meet that, I meet that requirement, okay? Provides original news and related content with the editorial content consisting of no less than 25% current news and related content. Now, that's weirdly written, but what I'm interpreting it to mean is that when you have editorial content, right, kind of like what I'm doing here where I'm just kind of uh, adding my own little uh, tidbits into it, adding my own thoughts, my own stuff, nothing news, nothing factual, nothing anything like that right as long as 25% of that creation is actual current news and relatable content then that includes me right that includes me because i'm basically sitting here and well a quarter of this it could easily be this you know the news this is this is a, a law that's been introduced it, you know i am bringing you the news this so far all i have to do is advertise haven't really advertised. I mean, I guess you could say I've advertised if I've like shared it on social media, <laughs> right? It's just yeah, you know, I feel like maybe an argument could be made there on to whether or not that's advertising. But at the very least, I could just you know print up some flyers of paper and staple them or tape them up like around the neighborhood, you know, put them in people's like mailboxes and stuff. Like then all of a sudden I'm advertising and I meet the requirements here, right? And then you see, notice it says and, and here, right? So you do all this and you do this, right? But and you do this, but then it goes to or, right? So regardless of whether you do all this, as long as you just have a license that has been granted to you by the Federal Communications Commission under Title Three of the Communications Act, then it includes you, right? All this other stuff doesn't matter. If you got a license from the FCC, you good. This includes you. If you do all this stuff, then word. You don't have a license? Cool. You can be included in all this stuff. You can't. Right? Online content distributor. Online content distributor, we already went through that. I mean, I guess you might want to see this. Like, A, with, you know, operates a website or other online service that displays, distributes, or directs users to news articles, works of journalism, or other content on there that is generated by third-party news content creators. Now, what's interesting about this and I, I probably should save this for a little bit later, but f something like Facebook and YouTube, I mean, they're, they're just platforms, right? So they, they display, but they don't really distribute, right? And they don't really direct users to news articles. Well, they have been lately, haven't they, right? With the whole Rona thing, every time they somebody puts up a video that's got the word COVID mentioned in it, it's, uh, oh, wait, no, we got to attach this little article to the side and direct people to these. So maybe, you know, through their fact checkers, right? Because Facebook's got those fact checkers, which are just, you know, left-wing news outlets. And they are actually kind of distributing those articles, right? They are actually distributing that. So I, there are cases, in fact, where, you know, places like Facebook and YouTube have distributed articles. They have. And so, you know, this, you know, at first I was like, they don't really do that. It's you and me, right? The users of the platform 
that share the articles, right? It's the users of the platform that spread things around, right? However, that's that's how it used to be. Over the last year, ever all that's changed. All that's changed. Now they're actually directing people to content produced by these news creators. Okay, okay. So now they find themselves, you know, in a position where they can actually be uh, approached in this manner. Now we get down to the actual law, right? That was just definitions. That was just definitions, and we'll go back to the definitions after we read the law. Just make sure everything is, you know, understood and smooth and all this, all right? So, the limitation of liability. This is this is the law. A news content creator may not be held liable under the antitrust laws, right? Remember the uh, antitrust laws that apply to unfair methods of competition. Okay, those laws cannot be held liable under those, you know, for engaging in acts of unfair competition, for engaging in negotiations with any other news content creator. All right, so what they're saying here is the news content creators can get together. They can negotiate with each other. They can effectively form a monopoly during the four-year period beginning on the date of the enactment of this act. Now, four-year period, well, that's a pretty odd number to use. Why four years, right? Like, you know, I feel like negotiations like of this type, you know, between big companies could, you know, maybe take like two years. They could probably get it done in two years or three years. But why four years? I mean, why not five years, six years, seven years, eight years? Hmm. I mean, that's just interesting because it seems like that four-year period in which this law would be in effect is the same four-year period that President Biden would be in office, or at least the Democrats would control the executive branch, right? You know, the branch that enforces the laws, right? Gee whiz. Anyway, to collectively, they can negotiate with each other, to collectively withhold content from, collectively withhold content from, or negotiate with an online content distributor. Now, seeing how an online content distributor was put forward in this definition, right? And there's an and here. It's not an or. So the online distributor has to have at least 1 billion monthly active users, right? That's not going to be your small sites. It's not going to be your small platforms like Gab or, you know, anybody else. So this isn't going to apply to the small guys. You know, but anyway, I suppose maybe you know Google, right? This would definitely apply to Google, like Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, WeChat, all those guys, just the big ones. But effectively, the news content creators, meaning the big guys like CNN, Fox, they can get together and negotiate with each other in order to collectively bargain with the uh, content distributors such as Facebook and YouTube and Google. And so they're, you know, they kind of want to allow for a union to be created in the media sphere, which um, is kind of funny. Kind of funny. I mean, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing at all. But you can understand what they're trying to do here. All right? What they're trying to do here is they're trying to save these media companies from going under. All right? Their numbers have just been tanking. Right, even foxes. After Trump left office, there was just nobody cared about the news anymore. <laughs> so it's just like their numbers just started tanking hard. Now, that just kind of tells you that their products are shit. All right? So, you know, they may think to themselves, okay, the only way we can kind of move this shit product is if we bargain together we group together and we say we're gonna withhold this shit product from you unless you give us a deal at which point Facebook is gonna look around and say look most people go to the small news creators right most people enjoy the small news guys because they're the ones that have been taking all your views away 
That's that's why nobody watches your stuff anymore. You got plenty of people, hundreds if not thousands of people out there, all going grabbing the source material, all going you know maybe not as many going to the ground with a camera, but there are people going to the ground with cameras, right? And so, what's funny to me is that what might end up happening is while the media and the Democrats they may be thinking, okay, we put this law into effect, we give the media. You know, because the media ran so much cover for the Democrats, right? And, you know, introduced by Amy Klobuchar. We all know who that is, right? You know, you, you don't need to know that she's a Democrat from, is it Minnesota, Michigan? Are you a leftist? No, I'm somebody who tries to find the truth of what's going on. And I make my decision based on what I think is best for everybody. <laughs> You know, Republican or Democrat, because I've definitely donated to, you know, both parties politically. You know, donated to one Democrat up in New York just because I wanted to... She was going up against AOC, and I was like, get that bitch out of there. She's so fucking annoying. But for the most part... I, so where do you politically stand? Individual rights? Right? So I, I guess, you know, whichever, whichever party's doing that, like, you know, end of the war on drugs... Like whichever party's doing that, because you know not not the big ones want it, which I think is absolutely ridiculous, right? Only the libertarians want that. So I'm you know, I'm wherever I need to be. You know, I stand where I need to stand, right? In order to get get what I need to get. Communism or capitalism? Capitalism. I mean, communism is just not even cap. Look, communism is just capitalism as a monopoly under the federal under the government. That's all that is. It's just if you basically took a company that had a monopoly over every aspect of everyone's lives, from the food to the gas to the energy, the water, just had a monopoly over everything, and gave them a military. That's communism. Communism is just like the worst form of capitalism. Right? It's just, it's, ca it's just capitalism at its worst. It just happens to be in control of the federal government, or the, you know, the government, the governing authorities, whoever that is at the time. And, you know, everybody with a monopoly, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a position that you're not going to, you know, waste, right? You're not going to let that go to waste if you got a monopoly over everything. So, yeah, capitalism. But, like, you know, reasonable capitalism, right? I'm not trying to be a dick or an asshole about it because there's, you know, capitalism where, you know, that's why we have antitrust laws, right? You know, we have those for a reason. But it uh, seems the Democrats want to suspend the antitrust laws for the uh, news companies, you know, the news companies that uh, ran so much cover for them over the last election, you know, those guys, so they can, you know, try to pull themselves together and save them, save each other from absolute destruction because nobody's going to watch that crap anymore. And what would be even funnier is if Facebook and Google were just like, no, like your, your product is crap. Nobody wants your product, and we know YouTube's tried it. Right? YouTube has always they've always got like the mainstream media source, mainstream channel up here is your next video that they want to play. Right? That's why I have autoplay off, literally, it's because they keep trying to play things that have absolutely nothing to do with what I want to watch. But I don't click on it. Right? I maybe watch like a Fox News clip like once a month. Right? And I'll see on other people's channels where they've taken clips from people, but like that's not going to apply here. That's not going to apply here because there's still, you know, uh, copyright and, you know, fair use, right? That's not, that's not going to end any of that. It's just not. Uh, now, they may try to push out, you know, the smaller news guys, but I think it would be funny if, like, every, all the news content creators on, like, YouTube, if they, if they, if they like, banded together and formed, like, a union against fucking YouTube, Right? And demanded like more pains, <laughs> like, like just more ads, right? Oh my gosh, because that was that's what this does. That's what this does because of their definition of a news content creator. Quite literally, the YouTube news content creating community could gather together and negotiate with YouTube and be like, "Look, we're gonna just go on strike and not upload any news content." Which, you know, may, you know, the other media companies would probably be like, oh, hell yeah. But, you know, everybody else would be like, oh, come on. Like, you know, they could do that. 
and then be like, you know, unless you make us a special deal. Which, you know, then it becomes anybody trying to get into that field, you know, anybody new trying to get into that union is going to be a whole other thing. You'll probably pay, like, union dues, stuff like that, All right? Because that's probably what it would form, right? It would, like, a temporary union is not something that this would create, All right? No, this would create a permanent union for the small guys. For the big guys, that union would have to be dissolved after a four-year period. Now, for the small guys, would it be dissolved after a four-year period? I don't know. Because I don't know if you can bring an antitrust suit against a group of just a ton of small creators. Right? I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> I don't know if you can even bring an antitrust suit against those guys. So they could possibly do that now. Right? You know, just if they got organized. Right, you know, same for the other platforms too. If people just, you know, got themselves organized and wanted to negotiate with these platforms in order to, you know, get a really good deal out of it, it's totally possible. But for the next, if if this law passes for the next four years, the big guys will be able to do it. You know, as long as Biden's in office, as long as the Democrats are in control, right? You see, they gotta set it at four years because if they did eight years, then you know, by the time the next election rolls around. They may not be able to uh, extend it, right? And they want to be like, yo, media companies, we uh, we did this for you because you guys did that for us. If you want us to keep doing this for you, then you're going to need to keep doing this for us. You know? But I think it's just interesting because I imagine what's going to happen is these big guys, they might be like, oh, yes, of course, you know, because they may own the media companies, right? So if they own a media company, of course, they're going to want to give, like, a good deal to that media company that they own in order to uh, prop it up, right? But I feel like that's the only place where this is actually gonna do anything, right? If Facebook owns one, if YouTube owns one, right, uh, what is it? YouTube, I mean, that's Alphabet. Alphabet owns YouTube and Google. I don't know if they own any news companies, but they may own a company that <laughs> owns a news company. Oh. Watch the video I sent. Yo, is this pre-recorded? No, no, no. Damn, this stream is dry as fuck. You don't even watch the chat. Well, you pre-recorded this and you're streaming it. Nah. I'm just, you know, trying to record this for editing later. All right? You left this. Yeah, who's in... Now how you gonna... How you gonna... How you gonna come back and be like, this is pre-recorded when I was talking to you earlier? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Fucking serious? Accuse me of pre-recording anything. I'm, I'm recording right now, is what I'm doing. So if I'm not, like, you know, paying attention to the chat, and I'm just, like, staring at the webcam, it's because I plan on editing this up later, right, and uploading it to YouTube. That's why. Right? I should have typed that in. I usually type that in. I don't know. Most people who watch know by now. <laughs> Most people who watch know kind of what the deal is. Uh, the video... In a little bit. Let me let me get this let me get this recorded. If I remember, remind me. All right. We'll take a look. Where the hell was I? Oh god damn it. Well anyway, that's the law. Right? That's the law. Um so they want to basically just remove the laws that are going to be able to keep media companies from engaging in unfair competition, acts of unfair competition, for four years while Biden's in office. And then with the promise, I assume, to, you know, make sure that they're not charged after the four years or, you know, make sure this law gets extended another four years, you know, so that way they're going to run more cover for the Democrats in the next election in order to try to keep this thing going. Because honestly, like, any agreement they make is going to last for longer than four years. And by any agreement, I mean in, uh, the media companies, any agreement the media companies and the content distributors make is not going to be for a period of only like a few years. It's going to be for like 10 years, 20 years, something along that, something along that line. And that's, that's what it is. Um, people were saying this is like going to uh, kind of push out like the smaller guys. Um, it's, it's possible... Right. However, um, and what's what makes it possible is the you know 
details in this limitation of liability. All right, so they're to negotiate with an online content distributor regarding the terms on which the content of those creators may be distributed through the distributor. All right now it's if. Right, and so they're putting a caveat on these negotiations is what they're trying to do. If the negotiations are not limited to price, if they're non-discriminatory as to similarly situated news content creators, directly relate to the quality, accuracy, attribution, or branding, and interoperability of news, and pertains to terms that would be available to all news content creators. Right. So I think what the deal is would be this one, is that the media companies would group together, they'd go to YouTube, they'd make a deal, right? And that deal may have something included where it's like, okay, we, the media companies, agree to pay like, you know, thousands of dollars a month for you to distribute our news first across the, you know, the searches. I hate how my computer advertises to me, right? I hate how Microsoft just like has built-in advertisements on the products that they sell. And I buy their stupid ass product because I'm not gonna buy a fucking Apple. And then next thing I know, I'm getting hit with ads for more Microsoft products. That should be against the law. I mean, make a law like that. Actually do something with your time up there in Washington, the damn politicians. Anyway. So they make this deal, they say, we pay you thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars a month. And then they go, okay, they go to the smaller news content creators, and they're like, look, the deal is you have to pay us tens of thousands of dollars a month, and then we'll distribute your stuff across this stuff. If not, you know, then you'll be left on the back burner, essentially. We're not going to care about your content, we're not going to care about pushing it, because we're going to be more you know, inclined to push content from the big guys who've made this deal with us and can afford the, the terms of the deal, right? And, you know, they use the words similarly situated news content creators. So non-discriminatory to similarly situated, right? So not so similarly situated, right? You got the big guys who are not similarly situated to the small guys, right? So as long as it's not discriminating, as long as the big guys agreement doesn't discriminate against the other big guys, then they're good. If it discriminates against the smaller guys who are similarly situated, but they're not similarly situated. They're situated, but it's not a similar situation at all, right? In terms of like views, in terms of like infrastructure, in terms of just everything involved with it, it's just not a similar situation. It just isn't, right? Even if they, even if they advertise, even if they put out weekly content, even if they put out original content, I don't, you know, I don't think the argument can be made that a small news content, news content creator who just kind of goes out with their camera, films a protest, comes back, throws in some editorializing, uploads it to YouTube versus a, you know, brand like Fox or CNN. You know, I don't think you can make the argument that those companies or those group, those two situations or you know, those two in, uh, organizations or individuals are similarly situated. I think it'd be a tough one to make. You might be able to make it, but I think it'd be a really hard one to make, and I can't come up with it in my head. And I argue all the time. I grew up arguing. So, you know, take it take it for what it's worth. But yeah. Now, these things are very interesting. These are the last two are just, you know, little things. The coordination between the news content creators is directly related to and reasonably necessary for negotiations with an online content distributor that are otherwise consistent with this act. The negotiations do not involve any person that is not a news content creator or an online content distributor. Right? I mean, that kind of just means that people can negotiate on behalf of the companies, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Because this does say news content creator is not held liable under these laws if the negotiations do not involve a person that is not a news content creator or an online content distributor. No, okay, that's what it means. Because it's basically like if the negotiations do not involve anybody that is not these things, right? So if the negotiations involve people that are these things, what the hell? Dude, the way they write these things. The way they, they use just like double negatives all the time. 
like double triple negatives it's just like fuck you you're trying to juke me out you're trying to juke my brain out with your damn writing but yeah that's basically what this is so you know people were talking about it as if it was gonna hurt like the small guys it very possibly can hurt the small guys but at the same time alright it's just gonna become kind of obvious how much they're gonna push it and these guys are gonna be paying or they're gonna be getting paid and nobody's gonna be consuming the content people are just still not going to consume the content because for so long people have consumed their content and it's just like wow you guys are really just kind of shitty people just a lot of them and I'm not talking about just CNN or MSNBC or ABC you know Fox News too like right? we, we all know Fox News has a bias like nobody's watching that like being like oh they're not biased nobody's nobody's doing that and honestly if anybody's watching CNN and being like yep world's most trusted news source most unbiased news in the world like are you serious like get yourself checked out if, if that's what you're doing if anybody's doing that like wow okay then our education system is real shit you know real real shit anyway yeah oh yeah yeah by the way I'm not gonna go watch that YouTube video motherfucker I was literally just talking to you like minutes ago and you're gonna sit there and be like Let's call my stream dry so you don't watch the chat start like, insulting me like motherfucker this is my stream you don't come in here and take over my stream with your YouTube video and your accusations you know so fuck your YouTube video but thanks for the follow <laughs> oh gosh anyway so that's this I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit this up throw it up on YouTube but all right, yeah. Any any questions? Any thoughts? Any chats now? Just, you know, I'm done recording this. It was all over the place mentally, you know. But I read it. And I thought about it for a while, and uh, yeah, I think I got all my thoughts out there. But yeah, I essentially see this as uh, the Democrats uh, trying to hook the media up after the media help them out you know that's what I see it as and I think it's kind of funny that only within the last year the big distributors the big online platforms became distributors right Cause people put up these videos and they're really like sorry but the Associated Press has already called the election for Joe Biden it's just like why are you directing me to that article like why? It's just like, no, so they started distributing articles and news stuff. And so what's funny is they could just stop doing that, right? They could just stop doing that. But like, you know what? We're just not going to include your shit under our videos anymore. Trump's out of office, so what do we need to do that for? You know? And so, honestly, I, I would just laugh if these media companies tried to pull, like, uh, like a strike. We're going to withhold our content from your platform <laughs> you make a deal with us and I just would laugh so hard if YouTube was just like you know what keep your content we're good and Facebook was like keep your content we're alright and all the big guys are just like mm. actually we were thinking about starting our own media company <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah I, I could just see this I hope this goes south for him you know, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. If it even gets passed at all. If it gets passed, then, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. If it gets passed, then you'll have four years where everybody on YouTube that makes news content can literally band together and tell YouTube, like, yeah, we want better deals. Same with Facebook. Same with Google. Just can do it, all right? These other these other companies, it might come down to a a thing where uh, it's you know Google's just kind of selling the top spot to the highest bidder, which is uh, not good for the media companies because if they're already going down, nobody's watching their content, and they end up paying 
big time in order to be like top spot and then uh, people just still don't click on their content <laughs> they're just out money just out more money and it's just like okay all right they'll just be gone even faster after that but yeah uh, I feel like traditional media is on its way out you know unless it's the boring stuff all right the boring like news media is the kind of stuff that people actually want to watch all right like I'm I'd be more inclined to watch like a c-span video where I could see how like everybody talking and all that stuff and get at the full spectrum of what's going on versus like little clips Right, it's nice if somebody goes through and like clips out the good stuff, but then you know it always makes me want to go and see the whole thing for myself, just because I know there's going to be something like before and after that that'll make it even better, or there'll be something before and after that that'll just change my perspective on it entirely. And so, uh, I feel like people are more interested in getting the facts themselves. If they're not, you know, I get it. You know, they got a lot of time, or not, not not enough time in the day, probably something like that. But yep, very, very vague definitions of news content creators and a very specific definition of online content distributor. Hello, how are you? Hey, RoboMax. I'm good. How are you? Doing well, I hope. Man. But yeah, for the next four years, antitrust laws are going out the window if this law gets passed. You know... The, uh, the laws that pertain to unfair methods of competition, you know, those laws. For some reason, the Democrats want to uh, ease those up for their media pals. Funny. I just hope it all goes to hell for them. I hope it just backfires. I'll laugh really hard if it backfires. I'm stressed with work. Oh, gosh. Well, what kind of work do you do? I am not a fan of Biden. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, Biden's poor guy. He's got an arm just all the way up his ass. <laughs> it's working his mouth. <laughs> you gotta feel bad for the guy. You're a small journalist? Well, uh, if this law passes, then you and your other... You can get a bunch of fellow journalists together, and y'all can collectively bargain for a good deal. Chances of you getting it, you know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of slim, but doable if this law passes. Uh, you know, I actually, I don't even know if this law of antitrust laws would affect small journalists now, right? We live outside the U.S. Okay, well, this, yeah, this, this is a U.S. law. But then again, if you, you know, distribute any stuff or you do any, like, work, I guess, or you put your product out in the U.S., you kind of... Kind of the market. Actually, stake. Robomax, dude. Yeah, where? <laughs> I love outside the U.S. Uh, well, I mean, if you don't, 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 don't say specifically where, right? Don't, don't give your exact address. <laughs> Just Birmingham, live in England. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, you do any reporting on the, uh, the the Freedom March? Was it that the U.S. had over there? Yeah, where are your manners, man? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all doing well. It's all right. Nobody really has manners online, you know? It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the follow, actually, Steak. That's actually that's actually a pretty cool name, actually, Steak. Yeah, as opposed to, the, you know, fake Steak. Yeah. Lean, lean Steak. I'm sorry, I can't do lean. Right? I just, not, I just got nothing to do with the of what they do to the calf beforehand. It's just the taste, the texture. It's just disgusting. I'm like, who eats this? Who would want to eat this? What are your preferred pronouns? My preferred pronouns are fuck and off. That's my, those are my preferred pronouns. Emperor Big Dick is how you will refer to me. And if you don't do it, I will be offended. <laughs> At Robomax is my pronoun. <laughs> Stupid pronouns. 
honestly, like, people on the conservative right use the word cisgender. I'm just like, fuck you. Like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> why are you. Why are you letting this... Why are you letting this take hold? Even if you're joking, I'm just like, mm. I just hate the sound of it. <laughs> I'm a socialist, lol. So you're a socialist that doesn't like Biden, and you work in journalism out of England, or, yeah, well, in Birmingham? Birmingham is, uh, that's a pretty big, that's, that's a labor, right? Like, labor party? I am an anarcho-communist. You see, those those two words don't actually like go together. <laughs> they don't actually fit. <laughs> I mean, like you know, it's it's because communism is everything is you know kind of controlled and distributed from a centralized authority. There's anarchism is you know anarchy has absolutely no centralized authority whatsoever. No, <laughs> you can't. So you can't actually be an anarcho communist. I mean, you might you you must be joking though. You're being sarcastic or something. I don't like Biden because he is indecisive. That's what you don't like about him. He's indecisive. <laughs> so the guy who has the record for most executive orders in first 30 days in office is indecisive to you. LOL. He will do crap all. Oh, he'll crap on every oh he'll crap everything up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. By uh, Obama said it best. Don't uh, don't underestimate Joe's ability to fuck things up. <laughs> he didn't use he didn't use fuck there, he used mess. To mess things up. Right, and yeah, yeah, you know. But heck, at least energy prices are going up. You know what's funny is uh you know, I live in Texas. Uh, more specifically Houston. Right, and we're literally like the oil capital of the U.S., like the energy capital of the U.S. And so, uh, all these policies and stuff about like you know energy and stuff is just making the price of gas go up. And so that's benefiting me, my family, everybody lives around here. Like, he will ruin the U.S. Uh, you know, he's he'll. Uh, He'll definitely hurt the uh, public image of the U.S. when it comes to uh, certain adversaries across the globe. But uh, the U.S. is the way it's situated is the executive branch can only do so much, right? They can only do so much. I mean, he might get us into a bunch of wars, at which point, you know, we'll have to, when we get the new president in, it'll just be like trying to convince those guys, like, yo, yo, last administration messed up. Like, can we let's get let's get some peace here. I am a doomer. It's a, like a doom, doom and gloomer. Big fan of Jer Jeremy Corbyn. So I've heard nothing but bad things about Corbyn. Did you guys watch that Iron Dome shit? Oh, uh, with the all the missiles that were being launched into Israel, and now Israel's gonna hit back. Yeah, yeah. My mom was all over that, Just running around with. Videos on her phone, missiles coming in. That's you know. I mean, heck, that's that's been happening for a while though. You know, that's that's not like necessarily even anything new. I think this time it was just a lot more rockets. Usually it's like two or three, maybe four. This time it seems like they were probably trying to just like overload the defense system. Corbin has a bad reputation because the fake news conservative media. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> also, it's just the first time I that's the first time I've ever seen Fake news, conservative media, right? It's it's over here. It's always uh, fake news, uh, leftist media, right? Um, over here, dude. 
it's insane. They they go pretty hard in the paint, but you know the people that their their audience that they're really you know going towards is just you know Democrats in the first place. You know they're not like inclined to go check out the story or anything like that. Um, I'm not like privy to too much conservative news out of England. I do watch uh, Sargon of Akkad and Count Dankula though. More specifically, the uh, Lotus Eaters podcast. I watch that like every day, except for like weekends. I don't necessarily like the weekend podcast because different different subjects, subjects that are just you know, you know it's weird, off topic. Well, not really off topic, but they're just different. Not for me. In my opinion, nuke Middle East. All problems should be solved. Yeah, except you know. Then you got a giant radiation cloud that's circling the globe. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Then then you know, then we'll have like, you know, winter for the next like two, three years. <laughs> Cancer rates are gonna go skyrocket. But you know, at least peace in the Middle East, right? Sargon can't debate for shit. I haven't seen any of the debates. But I have seen, uh, you know, the points where the people he's debating against just like storm off stage. I've seen those clips. He's a, he's a grifter. Uh, that's the first time I've heard that you know accusation. We have GB News and ITV News, fake conservative media in the UK. We also used to have Fox News UK. Okay. I don't know GB News or ITV. All I know is BBC. And uh, from what I know of the BBC is... It's a shit product. You know, it's it's one of those companies that's going to be negotiating for better terms from YouTube and Google because their companies are going down. But, of course, BBC doesn't have to worry about it, right? BBC... You know, y'all are all forced to pay them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh BBC are our liberals well, what's the difference well, that's that's left like you know liberals as opposed to what like what debating college students is not a debate I mean you know you, it's a debate if you're debating anybody Right, it doesn't necessarily matter, you know, their education level. Right, it's it's still a debate, but at the same time, uh, it seemed like he was at a college campus where the debate was being held, and that he was debating another adult. Of course, I have seen ones where they've just kind of invited people to just like come up and debate. Right, uh, and that's probably what you're talking about with the students. Like you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll debate them. You know, once again, I haven't watched those in their entirety. All right. All I know is Sargon's walking around, you know, with his, with his head up high, and nobody else seems to be, you know, taking any victory laps. Liberals are not left enough. I think liberals are centrist, conservative is right, and socialism is left, and communism is super left. Socialism and communism are the same thing, Robo. They're the same thing. Karl Marx and his buddy Engels use the terms interchangeably to describe the same thing. I, I, did, I did a stream on that a while ago. It's left, and communism is super left. Okay, no, okay. Conservatives right, liberals are centrist. Liberals are not centrist. They're, they're definitely left, right? Because they're more for uh, the social programs. Right, they're they're for the government kind of being the vehicle through which their charity is done, right? Instead of actually doing like the charity themselves, they kind of want to force everybody to do the charity with them. You love fascism. <laughs> fascism is Nazi, isn't it? Uh, well, the Nazis considered themselves socialists, so you know, fascism was more like Mussolini, right? There's not a huge difference there either, though. 
you know, socialism, fascism, communism. It's all totalitarianism. It's all, you know, state control. It's all, you know, there's always some kind of race aspect in there where you're dividing people based on race and it's like the whole thing. Uh, it's also like more based on like emotional feelings instead of uh, like actual logical reason and facts. And that's 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 from, it's from their own sources. You know, that's that's literally from that's from the horse's mouth. Nazism is different than fascism. Uh, you see, what's the difference though? Right, because I don't know if you could point out a difference between the two ideologies. Right, I mean they're they're both very much the same thing. If you can find a difference, please let me know. If it's like an actual difference, because you know fascist Italy, fascist Spain, Nazi Germany, communist Russia, right? Every single one had an aspect of like racial cleansing to it. Right, like which race was the actual like race that they were gonna like you know support? Each one was just total control over the economy and over people's lives. Right now, in some cases, it may have been like uh, kind of what they do in China and communist China today, where uh, a company is built, the company like comes up. And instead of like controlling the company entirely, they just like put like a second, they just put somebody in there to kind of keep an eye on it, right? And make sure it's kind of doing, you know, what the party wants it to do and it's not doing what the party doesn't want it to do. Like, there's a huge difference, LOL, not wrong. They were called socialists, but they do not portray the modern socialist movement. See, what does the modern socialist movement have to do with the German workers' social, the national German workers' social party, socialist party, right? Because that's what it is, right? You're saying like nationalism, right? I'm, I'm thinking that's what you're trying to say, nationalism. Nationalism had nothing to do with Nazis, all right? Now, people only think it was nationalist because they were like, oh, Germany, Germany, right? Like the fatherland, right? But then you've got, you know, communist China, the motherland, right? You've got fascist Italy, the motherland. Like, you know, just because they appeal to patriotism doesn't mean they're nationalists, right? I mean, you had the nationalists and the communists fighting in China, right? And the nationalists there, that was basically like a military dictatorship, right? Now, that was essentially the same thing in communist Soviet Union, fascist Italy, Nazi Germany. It was essentially a military dictatorship, but they just had different mechanisms for controls of the economy. That's what I think. Like, nationalism as a center held a message for reason, race, ethnicity. In fascism, in Nazi, they focus more on Aryan people. It's still like a racial aspect to it, right? Like, even in communist China today, the Han Chinese ethnic group is the racial aspect they employ, right? Fascist Italy, it was the pure Italian blood. Nazi Germany, Aryan race. Just because they appeal to this doesn't make it any difference. And, you know, we'll just take it here in the U.S., right? Socialists here in the U.S., it's all about, you know, black people. It's all about everybody that's not white. Why is it got to have this racial aspect to it? I don't know why. It just does. But every single one of these ideologies, be it socialism, communism, and, and Nazism isn't actually a thing. Right? The Nazis were socialists. Now you might say they were oh nationalist socialists. Like they they were socialists. Right? And I mean there's definitely like names aren't everything, right? Like for instance, uh, the Scottish National Party. They're actually very communist, right? Just because they call themselves the national, the nationalist party, doesn't do anything, right? Like you could call the uh, leader of North Korea president. That doesn't make him elected, you know that kind of stuff. So names aren't aren't necessarily everything, but do you read books? 
yes, I read books, actual steak. And you see, you're, you're bringing up this argument that I've already addressed. I've already addressed this, this uh, race aspect, this ethnic aspect that is shared by all these ideologies, all of them. Now you may say, okay, nationalist has a racial aspect to it. Not really. Nationalist, in the modern perspective, if we're going that route, particularly in the U.S., you can say, like, yo, I'm a nationalist because I want the U.S. to do well. It's got nothing to do with the different groups within the U.S. Well, I want just the white groups to do well. Or oh, I just want the black groups to do well. Or whatever. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. It's just like my nation, right? Whatever my nation may be, my nation. Now, socialism... All that, there's always some aspect of change. They always got to change something. There's always a problem that needs to be changed, and there's always a racial aspect to it, right? Germany, got to get rid of the Jews, the undesirables, all this stuff. I mean, even Hillary Clinton called the right deplorables, right? A basket of deplorables. That's just another word for, uh, you know, the unwanted in her mind, right? So you, you bringing this up as if the racial aspect makes it a nationalist thing. But that's not true because it's exist it's exists in communist China right now, today, and they're not nationalists at all. They fought the nationalists out. The nationalists are in Taiwan. Italy, they killed people that weren't pure blood. They went out and they took over new places and then they would take the people that were not Italian, force them to work, turn them into slaves. Germany did the same thing. All right? Now, those are socialists, those are fascists, those are communists. All doing the exact same thing, just by a different word. And even Karl Marx himself using socialism and communism differently. The difference between Nazism and socialism is socialists do not kill six million people. Except for the, the communists who, you know, starved like millions of people to death. Except for the uh, Keimer Rouge that murdered millions of people except for uh, oh man there's so many more oh except for what happened to the Tibet in Tibetan except for what's happening right now in Uyghur the Uyghur Muslims in China like I mean those are that's, like, that's communists right you're sitting there acting like a totalitarian government you know doesn't kill people if it's socialist like no right it's gonna happen Regardless, right? Even if they don't intend to kill millions of people, just because the government thinks it can all of a sudden insert itself into the food supply and control it and direct that food to wherever they think it needs to go, means millions of people are going to starve to death. Now, in China, they did something stupid, which was basically told the farmers, stop, stop farming, stop farming altogether, and just work on steel. You know, people who have no idea how to work steel, telling them to work steel. And so, you know, Nobody was growing food, so a bunch of people starved to death. Right? I mean, you know, they worked people to death in the Soviet Union. There's a there's a whole cannibal island where they sent people there to work, but they couldn't feed them, and so they all started eating each other. And it's just like you're trying to tell me that there's a difference. Like, I'm not seeing the difference. You're saying, oh, they don't kill six million people. No, they, they kill whoever they need to kill. Believe you me, Red Doctrines of Fascism by Mussolini, if you want to understand fascism, bruh, you dumb, lol, nationalism, I mean, look, if you're going to call somebody dumb, at least spell nationalism correctly, is part of fascism, not Nazism, Nazism's not a thing, that's socialism, get it straight, Taiwan were the nationalists and China not communists, look, the nationalists fled to Taiwan, that's what I said. They fought the communists. <laughs> where, are you, where are you going with this? Socialism allows for limited capitalism and it doesn't allow for a racial, racist aspect. Yeah, except... Point that out. Point that out, though. Because here in the U.S., it's all a, raci a racial aspect. You know, oh, you know, slavery happened. Jim Crow laws happened. So we need to do this for this community. That's the racial aspect. Even um, in the uh, American Rescue Plan that they just passed, 
um, they were going to give money to farmers who were affected by government decisions to lock down places and interrupt the food supply. And so um, what they did, though, is they said, uh, we're only giving this money to dis people who have been dis farmers who have been socially disadvantaged. Right. And then they said white people have never been socially disadvantaged. Right. So effectively, what the section is, is it's discriminating on the basis of race and sex, actually. It, it's got a, a women's thing in there, too, because they were going to prioritize minority owned farms and women owned farms. So, you know, sure, now there's something new. There's a sexist aspect to it instead of just a racial, racial aspect. But, you know, that's still socialism right there. Allows for limited capitalism. But you see, you, like, capitalism is what makes everything anyway. So all these, all these different forms of government are all just some form of limiting capitalism, right? Except in most cases where they actually kind of create a monopoly and then hand the power over to the government to enforce the monopoly. And then that's just a terrible situation. That's just capitalism. That's just hyper-capitalism gone to an extreme that nobody really wants it to go. China is horrible. Yeah, they got some terrible things going on in China right now. Ethnic cleansing is bad. Oh, I mean, yeah, don't you don't you don't need to even say it. You know, it's just like like what they're doing over there is so fucked up. Like it's 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 you know they literally what they took the men out of the homes and then they put their own like Han Chinese men into the the Uyghur women's homes and then there's just accusations of like all this rape coming out and it's just like. Like, holy shit. Like, fucked up stuff. Pure Italian blood, you didn't read the book, you're following the narrative just like the media shows. Yeah, I didn't read Mussolini's book on fascism. Right? Instead, I looked at all the historical examples of fascism, socialism, and communism throughout history, and I've noticed that they all pretty much do the exact same thing. They all say different stuff, like, oh, we're for this, we're for that, blah, 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 blah. But they end up just doing the exact same thing for a different group. It's just the same thing. It's the same thing, different name, you know? Robomax. Socialism does not allow racism to exist. <laughs> you, like, what? You, do you actually believe that? I can't tell if people are being serious or sarcastic in these texts, in this chat, man. I just can't tell. Because racism is going to exist. As long as you have ignorance, there will be racism. It's just like, and the and the idea that people are going to end racism is ridiculous. You're not going to educate everyone on the planet about everybody else on the planet. You're just not. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could try put everybody into an education camp when they're young. You know, get them while they're young. Oh uh, gosh, I'm not educated on Italy. Yeah, most people don't even look into Italy that deep, right? It's all about Nazi Germany, uh, Soviet Union, the Southeastern Asian, like, communist regimes, and right now China and North Korea. Those are the big ones, right? Everybody kind of saw Italy and Mussolini as sort of like uh, a second tier totalitarian government <laughs> during World War II because, let's face it, they got ran over pretty hard and fast, right? And, you know, the Germans did everything they could to try to keep them afloat, but, you know, it just couldn't happen. And then what, what ended up happening, they caught Mussolini. The people caught Mussolini and, you know, killed his ass. Real socialism has never been tried. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what they all say. Look, real communism, real socialism just hasn't been tried. Just, you know, it was, it was just done right. It's just like, God damn. I'm like, yo, what are you going to do? Put AI technology in charge of it? In order for it to actually get done right? I mean, imagine what a bug in that system would cause. Oh man! <laughs> oh, sorry. I just, I've, I've, I've heard that so many times, <laughs> too many times. Yes, but real socialism practice in Nicaragua or Chile back in the '80s was racist against Native Indians. 
it's always got a it's always got one and the reason for that is they just can't give away everything to everyone there's got to be a group that gets cut out because money right you only have so much of everything you know you only have so much even if you know you, so eventually you got to pick you got to pick and choose instead of allowing people to kind of pick and choose and decide for themselves the government at the top is like pick and choose and i mean it's like oh well these guys they don't like me very much don't send them any food that kind of thing and right now even in venezuela right the only way maduro is holding on to power is by selling cocaine and by, well, he's also got the oil, right? He's got the oil, but he's in so much debt with the oil. But the only way he's keeping the people under control is he's distributing food to his supporters. Not to the other people, just to his supporters. Robomax, real Marxist, also has never been tried. Now, you know, even Karl Marx and like stopped being a Marxist once he got older. You guys, are you guys aware of this? What you assume is that socialism and communism is the same thing. I don't assume that. I read that. And I read that from Karl Marx himself. Where literally they used the words interchangeably to, for the same thing. That's what, that's what interchangeably means. Is that they are very much interchangeable. They mean this... <laughs> <laughs> That's not an assumption. That is something I read. They are different. You keep saying they are different. And I've already asked, what's the difference? I've been trying to find the difference myself. I can't find the difference. By all means, show me the difference. And you guys keep bringing up these things that you claim to be our differences. And then there's nothing but historical examples out there that claim, okay, no, that's not true. So, like, by all means... You, get, you, guys, you keep saying they're different, they're different, they're different. How are they different? Because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing no difference whatsoever from where I'm standing. Now, you may think that one is not as extreme as the other, right? But that's not true. That's not true. Because it's all just about, like, who's in power, I guess, right? It's the same ideology. It's the same thing. You just might have somebody in office who isn't, you know, insane about it. So they'll, you know, allow for the people to actually do what they need to do, right? Like, uh, was it Gorbachev in the Soviet Union? Where it's just like, yo, this country's going to shit. We need to relax some of these things. Relax some of these things. Everything starts doing better. Like China, right? Yo, we're going to be poor for the rest of our lives unless we relax some of these things. They relax some of these things. Hey, look, boom. Oh, wow, look. Communist China's doing great. No, they're just not doing communism like they should. They're just not actually doing communism. <laughs> they're just not actually trying communism. They're, just, they're trying like a hint of communism. They're allowing the capitalism to kind of fill their coffers, and they're just trying a little, little hint of communism. Just keep control of the top big companies, you know, the, just the big money. Keep control over the stock market, you know, make sure that we're the ones who are able to just make the money off the stock market, you know. Put a little delay in the data there, let us know, like, um, you know, a few seconds beforehand, whether or not there's a big dip or big drop, so we can big buy, big sell, let our computers do all the work for us. Oh, gosh. No, Robo, going by your comment, real socialism has never been tried. I am going to leave because you are Nazi. <laughs> Is that, that's, that's just how it goes. Penguin, dude, where the fuck have you been? Because this has been, this has been crazy. This has been nuts. I've been sitting here, people have been trying to tell me things are all different. It's not the same. It's not the same thing, it's different. And it's like, how? And it's just like, race? It's not, no, 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 there's that. It's just like, eh. You don't know. Like, and then you turn around and because you don't actually have anything to bring up, and to support your position there, Robo, you we even call everybody Nazi fucks. Is that it? That's just <laughs> like oh, oh, he he got me with that one. Oh, I haven't been called a, a Nazi fuck in I don't know a month. Like come on.
Like you're over there in England. I'm over here in the U.S. where it all kind of started. And they just call them the right bunch of Nazis. It's just like, yeah, except the Nazis were socialists. Like, they weren't socialists. They were nationalists. Like, mm. I'm not sure where you're getting that from. Not sure where people are getting that from. Well, actually, I do know where they're getting that from. They're getting that from left-wing media, right? They think just because that somebody appeals to the patriotism of a country, that it's all of a sudden nationalist, and it's completely nationalist. It's not. It's you know, it's more nationalist than it is socialist, just because you know they're using the people, right? Which is basically how every socialist or totalitarian government got into power in the first place was by people putting them there. The majority of the masses putting them there. I mean, heck, like we've seen it used just time and time again. It's 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 not nationalism. Just you know, like if if it's nationalism, then why are you going out and invading other countries for more territory? Right? You're not happy with what you're not working on what you got now. You're moving out to take more, right? So it's not your nation that you're caring about. That's not what's going on there. You know, China doing the same thing. Show me a nationalist nationalist country or a nationalist government that went out and conquered more land, and that's not a nationalist government. Show me one that didn't do that. Yeah, nationalists. Right? I mean, that'd probably be like the nationalist government of China before the communists took over, you know, during World War II. Right? Of course, that whole situation is messed up. Communists basically just let the nationalists fight the Japanese. Well, the, na well, the communists went around and just built up their forces, and then once the war was over, the communists turned on the nationalists, kicked them out, just hit them while they were weak. Typical commie move. Let's see. Robo, every human being should be paid at his highest level of quality. Bet you can't even define fascism. <laughs> like, you, you asking me to define fascism? Because legitimately, if I were to define fascism, it would just come out as the same definition as socialism and communism. It'd all be the same thing. Because I, I can't see any difference. Like, show me a difference. And be like, oh, there's more nationalists than this. Like, no. Because quite literally, that almost seems to be a constant. Right? That almost seems to be a complete constant. If, if that was the case, that where it's like, oh, they, because they appealed to the nation, they appealed to people's sentiments, they appealed to patriotism, that automatically makes them nationalists. Well, then, communist China is nationalist. Right? North Korea is nationalist. If that's the case. If that's the case, then fucking. Socialists in the U.S. are nationalists today. I mean, I guess right now in the West you do have socialism or socialists who are just talking nothing but trash about the countries that they're in, right? Like the U.K. socialists are just talking absolute trash on the U.K. and its history and its flag and all that stuff and have no appeal to patriotism whatsoever. So you can say, hey, they're pure socialists. They're not nationalists at all, right? And then you got, well, of course... That, they do that, but they're all getting voted out, right? Labor had a huge destruction of a la of an election recently. Um, here in the U.S., oh, they decided maybe we shouldn't talk so much trash on the U.S. and its history and all this stuff. And they really eased up on it before the end of the election. And don't get me wrong. At the start of it, they thought they would be able to get away with that, but they, they stopped. They learned that that was not going to happen. And so every government... Dude, anybody who ever wants to get into a government position is appealing to the people that are about to govern. So it's just the idea that it's nationalist because of that. That's funny. And I know where that comes from. That comes from left-wing media who's been trying to tie Trump's America First policies to Nazi Germany. And it's just like... The people that believe that are the most ignorant amongst us. That's just the case. Buh, buh, buh. A socialism assumes you are worth the same as everyone else. No, that behavior is wrong. 
Yeah, I mean, well, socialism doesn't even necessarily do that because they they know like they know right. They they uh, well okay. It's it's uh, it's it's tough, right? Because in communist China, they you know went out and killed the intellectuals, right? They went out and got rid of the the smart people. Um, in Nazi Germany, you know, it was uh, we know who we need to like keep on for like the military and for science and stuff like that because there were people who. Uh, well, the reality of the situation in Nazi Germany was you, you didn't get anywhere unless you were in the party, right? Same thing with, you know, communist China. You don't get anywhere unless you're a member of the party. Um, however, you know, in both cases, they recognize the value of an individual who's not a part of the party, but still has like a really good brain on them, stuff like that. And so there, there's definitely some nuance there. Uh, I think socialism, communism, fascism all assumes that the the people are the uh, commodity almost of the government right um, that's 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 almost how it seems is that the the people are you know not necessarily uh, free individuals but rather you know products of the state that should therefore serve the state kind of a thing and so it does treat a lot of people like they're worth the same unless you're you know a member of the party in which case you'll you'll get the better treatment um, you get the perks uh, it's, it's, it's kind of that situation I'm being serious to find fascism without Google you use the word so it should be easy you use the word of fascism so it should be easy, but oh, without using Google, okay, fascism. Fascism is a totalitarian government that maintains control of the state that has no fucking elections. <laughs> like totalitarian government. That's that's a totalitarian government with an ethnic thing there, dude. Like same with socialism, right? Like now you tell me, your sound is cutting out. Still waiting, or are you another pseudo intellect using words you don't understand? Bro, America also pays its farmers not to farm. Yeah, I'm not like a huge fan of that. Right? Still waiting for a definition. Zero, is that for me? No, for the streamer. What exactly are you wanting him to define? I just showed up. Fascism. Well, if you follow the principles of socialism, is one happy camper. Well, if you follow the principles of socialism, is one happy camp? Okay, this streamer is pretty fucking dumb. You can hate left-wing ideology, but to equate it to fascism is literally dumb fuckery. I'm out. Sound keeps cutting out. Terrible. Proto zero. Fascism has been equated to socialism and communism because they're all totalitarian control governments. They all have an aspect of racial or ethnic identity that either needs to be removed or sustained. All right? They all are just controlled that way. And they're like in left wing ideology, like, how are you going to sit there and tell me that left wing ideology is not bigger government with more control? Right? Because that's what that is. Left wing is, you know, we need to pay more taxes to the government. We need to give more stuff to the government so that they can then give it out to whoever needs it, right? Seems pretty left wing to me. And the idea that you think, oh, fascism and I guess Nazism, the fact that you think Nazism, which you don't, you know, that's not you, but somebody else does think that Nazism is an actual term. Uh, but once again, made up by the left-wing media in our country. Because they've done this thing before where they uh, have recently, they've convinced people, or a lot of people, not everybody, but they've convinced everybody, a lot of people that the right is like the racist side of things. And they've really kind of done a really good job of whitewashing 
the history of the Democrats and the KKK working together to terrorize black communities. You know, they've done a really good job of, you know, making people forget that Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, that the Republicans had the first black congressmen and senators, and that, you know, so they've done that there. So they went ahead and did the same thing with socialist Germany, Nazi party, right? Because Nazis is just a short term for National Socialist German Workers Party. It's like the German name, and, you know... Nazi is not even an actual term. It was slang made up by Americans to insult the socialists in Germany. They didn't like being called Nazis. Because it pretty much just pointed out that they're, I guess, they called themselves the National Socialists. But it's really just the National Socialist Workers Party. As opposed to the local German Workers Socialist Party. It's just like calling me dumb fuck. It's literal dumb fuckery. Like, proto... Like, I've done my reading, and you're just sitting there, and you want me to give you a definition of fascism without looking it up. And you're going to act like I don't know what it is. And you're going to act like you know what it is. And so, therefore, I shouldn't be able to use the word or equate it to left-wing ideology, which it very much is married to left-wing ideology. And the idea that you want to think that fascism and, so, like, I guess, because fascism and socialism and communism are all fucking the same thing. But they're all the same thing, right? You're going to act like, oh, well, fascism's got nothing to do with the left. They were all allied together, man. Like, all allied together. All totalitarian governments with an ethnic agenda. And, you know, once again, I keep asking for differences. I keep asking for differences, like... What's the difference? I tell you, I say there's I see no difference. People say it's different. I'm like, what's the difference? Nobody's said anything. Nobody's given me anything. So I'm waiting. Right? You're, you're sitting there waiting. I haven't even caught up to your part of the chat yet, and you're still typing away. All right? I would think you would have noticed that I hadn't gotten to that part of the chat yet, but I guess. Uh, you did notice, but you decided to keep talking trash anyway when I wasn't even there reading it. So, you know, why don't you go pull your tampon out and come back when you're ready to actually have a discussion? Huh? And you know what? No. I was going to just Google it. I was going to change this thing and be like, oh, all right, let's look up your de definition of, of fascism. Let's, let's, let's look it up. Let's see what it says. All right? It's going to sit there. It's going to be like, oh, these are nationalists. These are nationalists, and it's just like, look, just because somebody appeals to patriotism doesn't make them nationalists. If you're a nationalist and you're deciding to go out and conquer more territories to increase the size of your nation, then I'm going to say, hey, sorry, that's not very nationalist of you. Right? Because if your idea of nationalism is, oh, let's take over the entire world, turn it into our one nation, have complete control at the top, and then distribute goods as we see fit. I mean, I'm sorry, that's communism. That's socialism. Those two are interchangeable. Over here, everybody agrees that socialism is on the left. So, you say it's dumb fuckery, but, you know, I'm not seeing a counter-argument. All I'm seeing are insults. That's all you guys have, just insults. You, you don't have an argument. You don't have a position to stand on. You go around with accusations. And that's the whole thing. And it's like, yo, been there, done that, next one. Anyway, that's the stream, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, holy shit, you know, I, I expect my viewers to be down now. Because, yeah. Like, you know, I got people coming on here, trying to tell me things are different. I'm asking them what's the difference, they don't give it, so they accuse you of being a Nazi, same shit. Same shit, different day. People over here being like, oh, those are nationalists. They're nationalists. And then calling you dumb while they're not even spelling the word nationalist right. It's just like, okay. And, oh, equating left-wing ideology to fascism is literal dumb fuckery. Maybe according to the left-wing media you've been consuming over the last four years, but according to, like, historical references, nah. They're actually, you know right next to each other, hip and hip. So, you know, 
come back at me when you got something. Instead of just like, oh, define this word. Define this word. It's just like, define this word. Which dictionary do you want me to use? Right? Webster's, the Urban's, or the Left Wing Dictionary? Like, come on. These days, man, with Google, Yahoo, all these search engines, literally putting stuff up, propping things up, pushing other things down. Literally have to go to DuckDuckGo just to look up the damn news. I don't like using DuckDuckGo, but that's the only place where I can get actual news. I try to look up news of what's going on in Israel, and it's just giving me a bunch of other random shit. It's got nothing to do with the Iron Dome attacks, and I'm just like, okay, DuckDuckGo. There we go. Actual, actual content that I'm looking for. But yeah, um... If my sound keeps cutting out, I'll have to check it. Sound, sound check. check. Oh, oh gosh. I'm going to go through and edit this video. Oh, oh no, the, the sound, sound seems, seems to be doing, doing alright for me. So, uh... I, I, I worked, worked on my audio, audio beforehand. I figured, I figured out everything. But whatever. Alright. See, See you next, next time. time. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. in. And by all means, come at me with your debates, because I was born to argue, I was born under, born to a lawyer, born under two older brothers, like you really want to argue, I'll take you down the road. I need this sound check, because I'm just playing with it right now. Alright, yep, peace out.